Hi, my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salient Consulting. This is another video on iBeacons and FileMaker 15. And this one we're looking at a use case of the technology. So a huge thanks to Bill Heiser. He's the one who put this file together. I love this demo. I think it really drives the point home on how we can use this technology. And I think we're going to see a lot of these use cases pop up now that FileMaker 15 is out. Assume that you're at a boat show. You could be at any other kind of event where we're dealing with vendors, where there's a conference hall of some sort or a vendor hall. And imagine opening up a FileMaker app and being able to get information based on where you are. So let's go ahead and click on this button here. So what we're looking at here is a list of vendors in order based on how close they are to me. On the right hand side, we've got a lot of file makery stuff. We may or may not show this to our users. A lot of this we probably wouldn't. So we've got an idea of how far we think that iBeacon is or in concept how far that vendor is. The major is what's defining who the vendor is and that's all being driven by FileMaker. And then the strength of the signal. So that's measured in decibels there. And some cool little stuff here. Bill's given us a nice scale to give us an idea of how far we are from that iBeacon or that vendor. What's great about this is that the technology is iBeacon, but really the iBeacon just defines something else. So in this case, it defines a vendor. And if we were talking about a, a larger venue or something with a lot more stuff and products in it, an iBeacon could even be a product. So it really just depends on what we're trying to encompass and what we're trying to define. But what I love about it is the amount of flexibility that we have here. So when I clicked on that button, it ran a script that basically sent FileMaker some iBeacon information. Let me open up this demo button and show you what what that looks like. So we've got just a long list of different things. It's going to give us the, the first three things in each one of these rows has to do with the ID of the iBeacon as well as the major and minor value. And then the other three numbers that come after that have to do with the distance and the accuracy as well as the strength of the signal in decibels. So FileMaker is taking this list, it's parsing out the important things, which in this case would be the major number, which is 1, 2, 3, and so on. And it's basically giving us an idea of how far we are from those, giving Bill the ability to sort this data in a way that is pertinent to where we are. Now I can't demo this very well here sitting at my desk, but I will pretend that I've now moved across the hall. And if I click on demo, let's pretend that I'm moved over to location two. You'll see that if I had from a real world perspective, I might have a refresh button like I did in my other demo there. But the idea would be that when I refresh the screen, it now knows where I am because I've moved locations. If it's gone out and checked for iBeacons in range, and it's giving me new values. So I don't think I was looking at this too closely here at the data, but these numbers would have been very different based on where we were before. From the iBeacon perspective, that's really as far as it goes. It tells us some information about the iBeacons around us, and now we're fully dependent on FileMaker to interpret that for us. Let's go back to location one here. So let's pretend I walked back toward Yamaha. If I click on Yamaha, Bill has built this in a way where I can now see all the products that Yamaha has. Now, some of these might be here at the boat show. Some of them might not be. That's just dependent on what we decide to store in FileMaker and how we choose to communicate that. But now I can scroll through here and see a bunch of data. This is all FileMaker for all day, every day. And now we're just dependent on how much we want to put in FileMaker. That said, FileMaker Go, FileMaker on iOS, really has a lot of functionality that's great for this kind of event. So now I can click on one of these boats. Let's click on this E-Series here. I've got a nice description. I know the cost. So I can scroll through here and see what other images exist. So I can scroll through the images. And then we have the ability to take advantage of all of FileMaker. So we could favorite things. We could email things. We could create a PDF and send that off to someone who might be interested in something. We also have this little video button. So let me demo that. So I'm going to click on the video icon there. And now we're able to watch a video about this product right on the iPhone. Now this may not feel any different than a normal old FileMaker Go app or something that we build on even a desktop or a website. But the big perk here is that we got here based on our location. So I looked at that boat. I walked down that path of looking at that boat because Yamaha was the closest vendor to me. I may have walked over to them, really liked them. Let me go look at their boats and get some more information about it. Now the extra little thing that Bill built in here that I really liked is this map view. So I'm going to click on map and what you see is a drawing of where we are. Now if you look carefully, all those icons have a different color to them. So it's either green, yellow, or red, depending on how close I am. And again, that's being defined very similarly to the list view. The list view was showing us something based on a scale versus the map view is giving us a hot versus cold feeling almost. In this case, in this demo file, the locations were all hard coded. There would be ways to make this more dynamic and more flexible. But the reality is that when it comes to something like 
a conference or a boat show, things are pretty static for every show or for every conference. It's going to be very different depending on the location. So I think this is a perfectly acceptable way of handling this. And Bill's thought this out. It's not that we can just look at the map and hope for more information. If I'm standing by Yamaha, which is the closest one I'm standing by, if it's the one that's closest to me, I might still be really curious what Mastercraft has. And in the list view, they might not have caught my attention to scroll down that far, or even see do or, or some of these others. But right on here, I can click on any of these, and I'll be taken to the details for that vendor. So I'm taking advantage of iBeacons in that I can depend on my location to give me the information that I want, but then I get to leverage FileMaker to give me more information when I don't want to be limited by my location. Or, more so, it lets me get started by knowing where my location is, but then it lets me walk down a path of knowing more about the vendor, more about their products, and it lets me walk down a path where I get to learn more about the vendors and more about their products without potentially having to talk to anybody just at that moment. I might be able to go up to someone and go up to someone at Yamaha and ask them about a specific boat, show them my iPhone and say, hey, I was checking this one out, what are your thoughts? But the conversation can become really, really valuable there. I'm looking forward to seeing this technology be applied for FileMaker apps. I think it's cool technology, it's fun to get these things set up and test them out. I think that it's going to add a lot of value for users. Now we get a lot of information right in the palm of our hand and we get to search for data when we need to, but it's very dependent on where we are and it just makes technology that much smarter for us. Again, a huge thanks to Bill Heiser for putting this together. Make sure to subscribe to Saliant TV and thank you for watching.